Hello students, welcome to the lecture on foreign trade policies and after this lecture we will be able to learn the following objectives. Understand the salient provisions under foreign trade policy 2004 to 2009. Discuss Vishesh Krishi and Gram Udyog Yojana VK GUY. Explain the assistance to states for infrastructure development of exports ASIDE. Explain the Market Access Initiative MAI. Discuss the Marketing Development Assistance MDA. Understand the sectoral initiatives. Define the exempt policy. To become a major player in world trade, a comprehensive approach needs to be taken through the foreign trade policy of India. Increment of exports is of utmost importance. India will have to facilitate imports which are required for the growth Indian economy. Rationality and consistency among trade and other economic policies are important for maximizing the contribution of such policies to development. Thus, while incorporating the new foreign trade policy of India, the past policies should also be in integrated to allow developmental scope of India's foreign trade. This is the main mantra of foreign trade policy of India. Let us discuss some salient provisions under foreign trade policy 2004 to 2009. Trade policy governs exports from and imports into a country. It is one of the various policy instruments used by a country to attain her goals of economic development. This policy is thus formulated keeping in view the national priorities for economic development and the international commitments made by the country. In India, the trade policy export-import policy is formulated by the Ministry of Commerce Government of India in terms of Section 5 of the Foreign Trade, Development and Regulation Act 1992. Besides, the Government of India also announced on January 30, 2002 a medium-term export strategy to guide the formulation the Export-Import Policy 2002-2007 to with the objective of achieving a share of 1% in the world trade by the end of 2006-2007 from the present share of 0.6% 2000 to 2001. The present export-import policy was announced on 31st March 2002 for a period of five years with the effect from 1st April to 2002 to 31st March 2007 co-terminus with the 10th five-year plan. Objective and Strategy the FTP lays down two major objectives to double percentage share of global merchandise trade within the next five years, to act as an effective instrument of economic growth by giving a thrust to employment generation. Special focus initiatives. The FTP 2004 has identified certain thrust sector having prospects of export ex expansion and potential for employment generation. These thrust sector include agriculture, handlooms and handicraft, gems and jewelry and leather footwear sector. Sector specific policy initiatives for the thrust sector include for agriculture sector introduction of new scheme called Vishesh Krishi Upaj Yojana to boost exports of fruit, vegetables, flowers, minor forest produce and their value added products. Certain facts and achievements from previous policies. In 2004, exports stood at a little over INR 315 billion. In 2007 to 2008, they have exceeded INR 7,750 billion. Exports are not just double what they were four years ago, but two and a half times that. We have managed an average cumulative annual growth rate CAGR of 23% 23% year-on-year way ahead of the average growth rate of international trade. Steps considered in latest 2004 to 2009 foreign trade policy of India. To promote modernization of manufacturing and services exports, the import. 
duty under the EPGC scheme is being reduced from 5 to 3 percent. Refund of tax on a large number of services related to exports have already been announced by the government. A few remaining issues regarding refund of service tax on exports are still in progress to be resolved. Income tax benefit to 100 percent EOUs available under Section 10B of Income Tax Act is being extended for one more year beyond 2009. Sports and toys are mainly produced by unorganized labor-intensive sector. To promote export of these items and also to compensate disadvantages suffered by them, an additional duty credit of 5% over and credit under. Focus product scheme is being provided. Export of fresh fruits and vegetables and floriculture suffers from high incidence of freight cost. To neutralize this disadvantage, an additional credit of 2.5% over and above the credit available under VKGUI is proposed. Interest relief already granted for sectors affected adversely by the appreciation of the rupee is being extended for one more year. The DEPB scheme is being continued till May 2009. Let us move on to the next topic, Vishesh Krishi and Gram Udyog Yojana. Objective of this scheme is to promote employment generation in rural and semi-urban areas. Duty credit script benefits are granted with an aim to compensate high transport costs and to offset other disadvantages. The objective of VKGUY is to promote exports of agricultural produce and their value-added products. Minor forest produce and their value-added variants for exports WEF 1st April 2004. Gram Udyog products for exports with effect from 1st April 2006. Forest-based products for exports with effect from 1st April 2007. The ASIDE scheme was launched on 13 March 2009. The allocation for financial year 2012 to 2013 is INR 800 crore and the allocation as per RE revised estimates is INR 655 crore. Prior to the ASIDE scheme, the department had been implementing four infrastructure development schemes, the Export Promotion Industrial Park Scheme EPIP Export Promotion, Zone Scheme EPZ, the Critical Infrastructure Balancing Scheme CIB and the Export Development Fund EDF for the North East and Sikkim etc. Salient features of the scheme. The objective of the scheme is to involve states, UTs in export effort by providing assistance to the state governments, UT administrations for creating appropriate infrastructure for development and growth of exports. Such involvement will be based on projects to be prioritized by states, UTs to address the critical link both at the point of production and the point of evacuation in the industrial cluster largely within the contour of the first mile and the last mile consideration. The scheme will provide an outlay for development of export infrastructure which will be distributed to the state's UTs according to a predefined criteria. Changes brought in ASIDE guidelines projected basket approach. In view of doubling of exports envisaged in FTP 2009 to 2014, involvement of states UTs is now based on the projectized basket approach. Herein, a general basket of 500 to 600 critical export infrastructure projects with visible and tangible impact for implementation during. 12th FYP is being prepared. The basket shall form the basic boundary of the scheme. The list shall serve as the benchmark for the type and size of the projects. Such basket will consist of shelf of projects 
20 to 40 in number received from all states, UTs and states are to implement these ASIDE projects during 12th FYP on priority basis. Four category of states, UTs, all states UTs have been grouped in four categories, large, medium, small and northeastern states. Punjab and Haryana fall in medium category states. 10% of ASIDE outlay is reserved for intensivizing states, UTs for their better performance under ASIDE as per incentive guidelines. Now, we will study about Market as Access Initiative MAI scheme. The Market Access Initiative MAI scheme is a planned scheme formulated to act as a catalyst to promote India's exports on a sustained basis based upon a focus product and focus market concept. Under the scheme, assistance is extended to the departments of central government and organizations of central state governments, export promotion councils, registered trade promotion organizations, commodity boards, recognized apex trade bodies and recognized industrial clusters and individual exporters only for product registration and testing charges for engineering, pharmacy, pharmaceuticals products abroad. Let us move on to the next topic, marketing development assistance. To facilitate various measures being undertaken to stipulate, stimulate and diversify the country's export trade, marketing development assistance MDA scheme is under operation through the Department of Commerce. The scheme supports the following activities. Assist exporters for their participation in approved EPC T-Trade promotion, organization-led export promotion events abroad, assistance export promotion council EPCs to undertake export promotion activities for their products and commodities. Do you have great ideas but need support to turn them into reality? We have four schemes under the MDA grant schemes which can help you at various stages of your projects. Whether you're developing an idea, producing content, marketing your creation, or upskilling your talent, there's a scheme to help you achieve your objectives. The four schemes are development assistance, production assistance, marketing assistance, and talent assistance. These schemes support projects, individuals, and companies from all media sectors, namely animation, broadcasts, film, games, interactive media, music, and publishing. Development assistance helps you develop ideas and create intellectual property to a level that's suitable to go into production. Marketing assistance helps you market to your target audience. Marketing assistance will also help grow overseas demand for Singapore produced content. The scheme helps you defray costs related to travel, marketing, and the promotion of Singapore media products. Talent assistance helps media professionals, whether employees or freelancers, to upgrade, upskill, and secure work attachment opportunities. You'll be supported for your training programs and work attachments. We also offer scholarships for undergraduate and postgraduate media-related studies. Let us now discuss about sectoral initiatives. Keeping in view the objective of foreign trade policy is to promote employment generation in rural and semi-urban areas. It has been decided to incentivize the export of Gram Udyog products, that is village and cottage industry products, by awarding a duty-free script at the rate of 5% of FOB value of exports under the expanded Vishesh Krishi Upaj Yojana, which has been renamed as Vishesh Krishi and Gram Udyog Yojana. However, the duty credit script shall be granted only at a reduced rate of 3.5% of the FOB value of exports in such cases where the exporter has availed the benefits policy for import of agriculture inputs other than catalysts, consumable and packing materials related to export item under this scheme. 
The certificate can be used for import of all freely importable items except capital goods or other such items as have been notified by DGFT. The scrip and the items imported against it, it shall be freely transferable. In terms of number of applications received during April to December 2006, a growth rate of 394% has been recorded over the number of applications during April-December 2005. Similarly, in terms of value of duty credit issued, a growth rate of 296% was recorded. Service exports. A number of trade-friendly features have been included in the served from India scheme to meet the requirements of service exporters. Service exports in Indian rupees which are otherwise considered as having been paid for a free foreign exchange by RBI will now qualify for benefits under the served from India scheme. In addition, the foreign exchange earned through international credit cards and other instruments as permitted by RBI for rendering of service by the service providers shall be taken into account for the purposes of computation of entitlement under the scheme. Benefits of the scheme earned by one service provider of a group company can now be utilized by other service provider of the same group company including managed hotels. Standalone restaurants will now be eligible for benefits under served from India scheme 10% of FOB value of exports instead of the earlier 20%. Engineering Export Promotion Council, EEPC Publicity and Promoting the Made in India brand organizing INDEE India Tech exhibition participation in leading exhibitions and trade fairs, seminars and conferences, trade delegations and buyer, seller meat trade informatics division TID Foreign Offices of the Council, the India Engineering Centre Export Related Services to Members Services to Overseas Buyers, Package for Marine Sector, List of specialized inputs used in the marine sector has been expanded to include additional items of chemicals and additives within the present duty-free entitlement of 1%. Self-removal procedure for clearance of seafood waste to be applicable subject to prescribed wastage norms. Fisheries have been included in the sectors which are exempted from ma maintenance of average EO under EPGC scheme subject to the condition that fishing trawlers, boats, ships and other similar items shall not be allowed to be imported under this provision. This would provide a fillip to the marine sector which has been affected by the present downturn in exports. Additional flexibility under Target Plus Scheme TPS Duty Free Certificate of Entitlement DFCE Scheme for status holders has been given to marine sector. Gems and Jewelry Sector India as a Gem and Jewelry Hub Measures for facilitating export of value-added products catering to changing needs of market, facilitating easier product movement across the borders and allowing import of precious metal scrap for refining. Export of jewellery on consignment basis allowed. Re-import of rejected jewellery allowed. Imports of precious metal scrap used jewellery for melting and re-export permitted. India as an automotive hub. Provision to allow import of new vehicles by auto component manufacturers for R&D purposes without homologation is being introduced. To further accelerate India's emergence as an important centre for sourcing auto components, T minimum value addition under advanced authorization scheme for export of T has been reduced from the existing 100% to 50%. DTA sale limit of instant tea by EOU units has been increased from the existing 30% to 50%. Export of tea has been covered under VKGUY scheme benefits. Let us now discuss about the exempt policy. 
The foreign trade of India is guided by the export-import policy of the Government of India, regulated by the Foreign Trade Development and Regulation Act 1992. The exim policy contains various policy decisions with respect to import and export from the country. The exim policy is prepared and announced by the central government. The exim policy of India aims to developing export potential, improving export performance, encouraging foreign trade and creating a favorable balance of payment position. Features of exim policy Union Commerce and Industry Minister Mr. Mura Sole Marin announced the exim policy for the five-year period 2002 to 2007 on March 31, 2002. The main thrust of the policy is to push India's exports aggressively by undertaking several measures aimed at augmenting exports of farm goods, the small-scale sector, textiles, gems and jewellery, electronic hardware, etc. Besides these, the policy aims to reduce transaction costs to trade through a number of measures to bring about procedural simplifications. In addition, the exim policy removes a quantitative restrictions QRs, on exports except a few sensitive items. Special Economic Zones SEZs. Offshore banking units OBUs shall be permitted in Special Economic Zones SEZs. Units in SEZ would be permitted to undertake hedging of commodity price risks provided such transactions are undertaken by the units on standalone basis. Units in SEZ shall be permitted external commercial borrowings ECBs, for tenure of less than three years. For existing EPZs have been converted into SEZs and 30 new SEZs have already been given approval. Employment Oriented Measures Exim Policy 2002 to 2007 initiated a number of measures which would help employment orientation. Among them were the following Negative list of exports from India, prohibited list, canalized list, restricted list, prohibited list. Entries in the prohibited list export or which is not permitted on religious and environmental considerations. All forms of wildlife including their parts and products except peacock tail feathers including handicrafts made thereof and manufactured articles and shavings of shed antlers of chital and sambar subject to conditions. Canalized items list 6 entries and 17 sub-entries, export of which is permitted through designated canalizing agencies following the amendments to the exim policy announced on 31st March 1995. Prior to this amendment, there were 6 entries and 18 sub-entries in this category, canalized items exports following the amendments to the exim policy announced on 31st March 1995. This category now consists of 6 entries and 17 sub-entries. The items deleted from this list after the amendment are marked here with the petroleum products namely aviation turbine fuel, bitumen, asphalt, paving grade, crusade oil, furnace oil, high-speed diesel, kerosene, LPG, liquefied petroleum gas, motor spirit, naphtha, raw petroleum coke, gum karaya, restricted items list, batch DMAR of sizes below 3 inches, cattle, camel, chemical fertilizers, all types including superphosphate, micronutrient, fertilizers and mixtures thereof containing NPK excluding those specified, dress materials, ready-made garments, fabrics, textile items with imprints of excerpts or verses of the Holy Quran, defiled groundnut cakes containing more than 1% oil and groundnut expeller cakes, fresh and frozen silver palm frets of weightless than 300 grams 
fur of domestic animals excluding a lamp fur skin. Now in the end, let us summarize what we have learnt in this lecture. The foreign trade of India is guided by the export-import exim policy of the Government of India. ARID is regulated by the Foreign Trade Development and Regulation Act 1992. To become a major player in world trade, a comprehensive approach needs to be taken through the foreign trade policy of India. Increment of exports is of utmost importance. India will have to facilitate imports which are required for the growth Indian economy. Trade policy governs exports from and imports into a country. It is one of the various policy instruments used by a country to attain her goals of economic development. The FTP 2004 has identified certain thrust sector having prospects of export expansion and potential for employment generation. The Market Access Initiative MAI scheme is a planned scheme formulated to act as a catalyst to promote India's exports on a sustained basis based upon focused product and focused market concept.